zu beten. Hello. Hello. What's up, Giovanni? Good evening. How's it good going? I'm fine. Fine. Great. What did you do today? Today. Oh, many, many things. Okay, tell me about it. What? Okay. Today I I go to the, to my work. You went. Went to my work, and. Resolver problems. Resolve I solved. Problems. I solved problems. Okay. All problem of everybody. Of problems of everybody. Uh, you solved. Okay. I solved everybody's problems. Okay. I solve everybody's problems. Okay. Really? What do you do? Why do you, did you solve everybody's problems? But I work uh, as a lawyer. Oh my God! <laughs> really? I, you, I did. You I have made, to solve problems. Okay, give me one second. I'm just getting comfy. Uh huh. I need to work with any type of problem. That must be very but, difficult. Not my problem. Not your problems, but <laughs> that's crazy. You have to solve some other people, someone else's, someone else's problem. Wow. A whole day. All day. Wow. Right. That's and crazy. But do you I like know? your job? Yeah, I like love, my job. Love your job. job. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. hard, but it's interesting. Cool. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. Do you learn something new from every client? Yes. Um, <laughs> I know people. Um, to to read. You love to read. Yes, it's tired, but tired. A bit tired. Tired. So, Excellent. That's tired. tired. Excellent. Okay, it's tired, but. When you love something, it's very yes. important. Um, hmm. How do you, how do you call when? Jurisprudencia. I'm trying to find the term on in English in my head. I can't really think about it. Jurisprudencia. No, I don't think. I don't think so. Well, homework. <laughs> how do you say jurisprudencia in English? Okay. <laughs> I love Good that. Homework. I love that term because there's a lot of jurisprudencia every day, <laughs> right? Okay, Ricardo. Good evening. Can hear you. <laughs> Muted. Okay, Houston. We have some technical problems. Oh. There you go. Can you hear? Yes. Yes. Okay. How's it going? Long time. Long time no see. <laughs> yeah. Um, today is and um, weekend. It was. Um, it was funny. Uh, interesting. Um, some some what is the difference in, in between problems and troubles there's no difference between troubles no okay. trouble trouble right. and problems although yeah you could you couldn't use trouble in plural that's not common okay i have some trouble um, listen i have some trouble i have uh -huh. some trouble i have some problems 
some trouble, some problems. Same, same. Okay. Yep. Okay, I have some troubles with my car. It's out of service <laughs> because the um, the computer, the, the car's computer is broken. <gasps> the car's computer is broken. Yeah, yeah. Is it a, what year is it? Search in, in some places. What 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 year is your car? What? Sorry. What's what's the year of your car? Ah, it's uh, 1993. 1993. It's a Honda Civic. Oh my yeah. God! Yeah, that's a big problem. That is a big it's problem. A, you're into, you're, you're into are, big are big expensive. expensive. Not so because is, no, um, it's just that the computer is like yeah really difficult hope hopefully you find some good mechanic we we have a, a, a some we have a big trouble in my car okay don't worry everything's gonna be all right everything okay. will be fine maybe, maybe. sure about it marlon hi teacher good evening good evening how's it going fine teacher today was a good day really why why because i I went to my work uh, because I need to be physically in the work. But yeah, in the workplace. So, uh, in the workplace. Yeah, but there are, today I haven't too much problems. So it was a relaxed day. Excellent. I like to yeah. hear that. Good job. Okay. Edwin. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good evening. Good evening. How's it going? Uh, fine. Uh, on Monday, in the work. At work. At work. At okay. work. How was your weekend? Uh, fine. Uh, uh, some tired uh, because uh, I doing. Uh, Things uh, of the home. Okay, so I, I was doing. Repeat. I was I doing. I was doing home chores. I was doing home chores. Chores. I was doing home, home chores. chores. As I was doing home chores. Really, like painting, cleaning the house. Yes, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, in the house. The house. I'm the man of the house. <laughs> I the man of the house. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's good. Good job. Okay, I, that, that's my case as well. I had to paint a wall on the weekend, but it was our twelfth, our twelfth anniversary with my wife. So twelve years married. Um, oh, and she she brought. <laughs> thank you. She brought a projector from her job. She brought a projector. And I wanted to see a good movie since wow. since long time ago. Maybe you heard about it. It's Lions of Second Hand. Lions of Second Hand. Robert Duval. And I can't remember the other actors, but it's with Robert Duval. Leone de Segunda Mano. It's from 2003. Okay. 2003. Man, that's an amazing movie. I couldn't find it. So I hired the um, services of Claro Movie. We have Claro at home. So we hired the um, Claro Movie services and we got HBO for seven days, the trial, a free trial for seven days of HBO. And there it was, there was the movie. So it was amazing. We saw the movie, the kids, the kids loved the movie, you know, because it's a nice story. So it's yeah. crazy. It's a crazy story. Okay. Okay. And, and then I painted the house. I mean, one wall that I need, was missing to paint. There's always something to do at home. Okay, guys. Thank you. I can say welcome to all of you, but I'm glad to see you, Avel, Stephanie, Mercy. Okay. We are eight. Oh my God. What's going on here? Avi. Hmm. Okay, hold on. Mm. 
I was just texting everyone. Okay, so let's start. Let's talk about today's topic. What do we have to cover on your platform for today? We're going to talk about something the whole week. These four days, we will be covering one unique topic. If you have checked the platform, we're going to talk about the simple future. And I'm pretty sure many of you are already aware of how to use the simple future, okay? So we're going to take advantage of having only one topic. Did you get it? Okay, vamos a tomar ventaja de tener solo un topic nada más para toda la semana, para los últimos cuatro días. Okay, es importante que no se pierdan ninguna clase y que llenen la plataforma. Este punto ya tiene que estar para el jueves en la noche, a la medianoche, tiene que estar terminada la plataforma. Okay, ya vamos a hablar de eso al final de la clase. Okay, so, se me salió el español, tío. Okay, so... Let's go. <laughs> pues hombre, hay que continuar, eh? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to play the video so we learn about the structure, the structure of the future with be going to and will. It's two different things, okay? So let's pay attention. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll learn how to talk about future plans. You'll also learn how to use be going to and will as you're expressing your future plans. For example, I'm going to go to France for my next vacation. I'm not sure what place I'll visit yet, but I think I'll visit the Eiffel Tower. Before I explain the grammar involved in this lesson, I would like to play an audio program to illustrate how this topic is used. Your task is to listen carefully and take notes as I'll ask a few questions about this listening activity at the end. I'm so excited. We have two weeks off. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. I guess I'll just stay home. Maybe I'll hang out with my friends and watch some movies. What about you? Any plans? Yeah, I'm going to relax at the beach with my cousin. We're going to go surfing every day. And my cousin likes to fish, so maybe we'll go fishing one day. Sounds like fun. Say, why don't you come with us? Do you mean it? I'd love to. I'll bring my surfboard. That's great. The more the merrier. By the way, where are we going to stay? Oh, we can stay in my aunt and uncle's beach house. They have plenty of room, and I'm sure they'll be happy to have guests. I'll call in tonight to let them know what time we're going to arrive. I guess we'll leave pretty early. There's a direct bus every morning at 5 a.m. That's fine with me. I think I'll be too excited to sleep. Now let me present this structure. What we want to do in this lesson is learn how to talk about future plans using going to and will. Now for the main part, both of those are quite similar when you express future plans or when you express things about the future. But what we're going to learn in this class is that we're going to use be going to whenever you talk about something that you've decided on. That's the key here. Something that you've decided on, we're going to use be going to. So let me give you a quick example about that. Let's say that you're going to take a vacation. You already bought the plane ticket. You already got permission from your job. So it's very unlikely that you'll change these plans. In order to express these ideas, you're going to use be going to to express that. So for example, I'm going to take vacations next week. I'm going to go to France. That's just a quick example there. Um, you're almost sure that that event will happen. On the other hand, let's say that you're going to, you want to take vacation, but you don't know yet. You haven't even asked your boss about it yet. And so um, you're chatting with some friends and they ask you, so what are you planning to do for your vacations? And 
maybe you respond well I'm not sure I guess I'll go to Europe next month but I don't know I haven't bought the tickets I haven't asked my boss whether I can go or not and so in order to express that idea that you haven't decided on then we're gonna use these expressions I guess I'll just um, stay home Th these are the examples here in the book but um, going back to our example about vacations I'll guess I'll travel but I'm not sure where uh, maybe I'll go somewhere in, in Europe I probably will go somewhere in Europe and that's I mean those are just my examples on on how uh, you will use these expressions but the idea here is that if you're thinking about something that you're not sure about whether that will happen or not then you're gonna use these expressions towards the right and that's the difference that we're gonna learn in this particular class so quickly before we talk about this particular chart what I would like to do is just present the structure on how to form sentences with be going to so the examples on the left side of this chart in order for us to express our thoughts and ideas about the future with be going to we're gonna have some sort of subject so in this case I'm gonna say um, I am gonna stay home for the weekend okay that's what I want to express um, and so in order for us to form that idea I'm gonna have some sort of subject this is gonna follow the verb to be and then this is gonna follow going to if you notice going to is some kind of auxiliary to form our ideas in the future and then this is gonna follow the verb in its present form and then whatever complements so like in this case I'm gonna stay home for the weekend right so this is what I've decided on doing that's my plan and so if you see towards the left side of the chart we said that we're gonna use be going to plus the verb for plans that you've decided on now let me talk about things that I haven't decided on so in order for me to talk about possibilities that will happen then I'm gonna use the expressions towards the right now let me talk about the possibilities of what I'm gonna do at my house and so um, what I want to do is present this structure towards the right because what I want to do is I want to think about the things that I haven't made a decision on so in order for me to express those ideas what I want to do is I want to have some sort of possibility if you will all right and so what do I mean by that well the expressions such as I guess all right the expression maybe uh, the expression I think the expression I probably okay um, and so that's what I want you to notice here right so well I'm gonna stay home for the weekend I guess and then this is gonna follow a subject I will watch the football game all right and so I could do the same thing for the rest of the possibilities that I mentioned these are just words that will guide me towards expressing that this is not something that I've decided on maybe I'll watch the football game uh, I think I'll watch the football game I probably will watch the football game now um, with this last one here I would like for you to pay attention to that one um, this is not gonna follow the subject okay uh, it will just continue to follow. I probably will watch the football game. But for the rest, you will need that subject there in the middle. Okay. I guess I'll watch the football game. Maybe I'll watch the football game. I think I'll watch the football game. But however, with this one, you don't want to use uh, a subject there in the middle. I probably will watch the football game. the last thing that I would like for you to do is to think about your next vacation and make a plan of where you want to go and then within that plan think of all the possibilities and of course use this topic that we're covering today in class so you may use these questions to help you with this exercise 
How are you going to spend your next vacation? Where are you going to go? When are you going to take your next vacation? How long are you going to be on vacation? Now, if you look at, let's say, the second question, where are you going to go? You might have decided to take your vacation and you might know exactly where to go. And then again, you might not. So if you're sure about it, then you're going to use the expressions towards the left. You're going to use be going to plus, um, you know, whatever complement that exists. So you're going to use I'm going to go to Europe. All right. That could be um, your plan. But if you don't know, you haven't decided on, I'm not sure of where. Okay, so I need a volunteer. I need a volunteer. Necesito un voluntario que le guste hablar mucho en español. <laughs> okay, Spanish, anybody? Hello? Me no hablo mucho español. Anybody? Hello? The ¿Qué question... vamos a decir? Thank you, that's right, Stephanie. What did you understand? What did you understand in Spanish? ¿Qué fue lo que entendí? Mm -hmm. Ay, Dios mío. Es que yo los confundo el going con el will teacher. Mm -hmm. Tuve cierta dificultad al momento de estar haciendo el examen en la plataforma. Uh -huh. Entonces yo tenía esa consulta. Yeah. ¿Por qué no se pueden utilizar ambos si es para decir lo mismo? Y me pasó en dos preguntas y incluso hasta en el, en el video que, que nos acaba de poner porque es uno de los que aparece para el examen. Ok, ok. Let's see. Bien, eso era exactamente lo que quería escuchar. Gracias, Stephanie, por eh, perder el miedo pues, y podernos decir lo que piensa. So, thank you. Vamos a abarcar esto súper rápido en español porque quiero que quede claro. Ok, sin ninguna duda alguna. Bueno, uh, vamos a empezar con going to. Y como siempre lo vamos a poner en contexto. Así súper rápido. Cuando ocupas going to, estás diciendo, por ejemplo. Um, ok, I'm going to play basketball. Esto, ¿cómo lo traducirían ustedes? Marlon, vamos, cualquiera. Voy a jugar básquetbol. Exacto, voy a jugar básquetbol. Casi. Textualmente. Voy a, voy a ir a jugar básquetbol. Ahí estás, muy bien. Yo voy a ir a jugar básquetbol. Ok. Seguro, ¿no? Yo voy a ir a jugar ya básquetbol. Está planeado. Ya está. Comparémoslo, contrastémoslo. Contrastémoslo. Al... I'll play basketball. ¿Cómo traducirías esta oración? En Yo español es ir a jugar. ¿Cómo, cómo, cómo? María Luisa, perdón. No, yo podría ir a jugar. Yo podría ir a jugar basketball. Ambas dijeron lo mismo. Marlon. Yo pienso que la traducción es la misma al final. Sin embargo, el hecho que se esté usando I will quiere decir que es un plan no, no certero, ¿verdad? Algo, un plan que Fíjate no, que... no, que <ríe> me no llega. tengo claro que lo voy a hacer. Ajá. Me llega. Tú, tú lo entiendes así, pero fíjate que por eso es que es bueno ponerlo en contexto en el español. Lo que estás diciendo es nuestra otra manera de hablar, que muchos lo ocupamos, muchos no, eh, que estaría diciendo jugaré básquetbol. Ok. Jugaré básquetbol. Yo entiendo, algo... Uy. Yo entiendo algo así como que el going es algo ya planeado y el will es algo que probablemente tengo en mente hacerlo, pero no estoy tan segura. Bien, ¿qué hace? ¿Qué hace? Eh... No, es que así es, así es. ¿Cómo afecta going to al verbo y cómo afecta will al verbo? ¿Ok? 
going to affect el verbo dándole la gran posibilidad porque going to quiere decir voy a ir a ya estar yendo a cuando tú agregas ing a un verbo es decir lo pones en su presente participio hoy cuando pones en presente participio un verbo lo que estás haciendo es accionarlo darle el ando endo uno no en términos generales pues entonces estás diciendo que ya estás en esa acción, ya te ves en esa acción de ir a realizar esa acción. Si estuviésemos en clase presencial, me pararía y les diría, I'm going to. O sea, ya voy para allá, ya estoy de camino, ya estoy en marcha a jugar, a comer, a lo que sea que voy a hacer, ya. Pero will, de hecho, la palabra will, o el, sí, la palabra will, Significa por su sola, por su sola voluntad. ¿Quién se acuerda de los picapiedras? Cuando se muere el tío de Pedro y dice. Last will. O sea. Su ¿qué? última voluntad. <risa> Decía testament. ¿verdad? El testamento. ¿Sí? Last will. Y ahora te pregunto. ¿Cuándo? Cuando tú decís que tenés la voluntad de ayudar a alguien. O tenés la voluntad de llevar a cabo una acción. Lo haces. Okay. So, vamos poniendo en contexto me encanta poner en cont ese contexto de esto del futuro para que lo aterrices, creo que ahorita sacando bien claro, o sea, si es will tendré la voluntad señor de hacer esto ok uh, Giovanni, will, will you borrow me five dollars will you borrow me five dollars Giovanni <laughs> No, okay, microphone. May I borrow five dollars, Giovanni? No, okay, you don't your microphone. Giovanni me diría, tomorrow, teacher. I will. I will tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Ya, no se llevará a cabo esa acción. En cambio, si está seguro, me va a decir, I'm going to borrow five dollars to you tomorrow. ¿Está claro eso? Yeah. Eh, volviendo, will agrega la partícula re al verbo. Es decir, si digo, I will play, sería jugaré. I will eat. Comeré. Comeré. I will tell you later. I'll tell you later. Te diré. Te lo diré. Ajá, te diré más tarde. I'll see you tomorrow. Te veré mañana. <laughs> Y no sabemos, en realidad es lo más común, ¿no? ¿Han escuchado eso? I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, I'll study tonight. I'll study tonight. <ríe> Estudiaré en la noche. Mm -hmm. ¿Sí? Poca probabilidad. Sin embargo, si digo, I am going to study tonight. Yo voy a estudiar hoy en la noche. ¿Hoy sí? Yeah. Como un poco más claro, ¿no? Ok. Yeah, Let's talk about the structure, okay? Let's talk about the structure. So let's start with going to, okay? So first you need a subject, then the auxiliary of going to is not going to. The auxiliary is the verb to be, okay? So subject plus the verb to be plus what? Going to. Todo el tiempo tiene que ir eso, going to. Then you need a base verb. Okay? A verb on its base form. Un verbo en su forma base. Okay? And the complement. That's basically the way you make a positive, or well, let's say an affirmation, an affirmative sentence. Okay? I'm going to say positive. Okay, you make a positive sentence that way. Let's make a negative. Negative structure. Anybody? In a subject, then? Mm -hmm. To be not, right? To be not. To be not. Okay, and then the same thing. Recuerden que 
90% de las reglas gramaticales son iguales. Solo identificar el auxiliar y ya estás hecho. Ya identificaste el auxiliar. Ok, aquí me estoy equivocando. So we need, para hacer una pregunta cerrada, to be, ok, plus, subject, subject. Hmm? was going to, you know what, I'm just going to copy it. Same thing. ¿Viste? ¿Por qué es importante identificar el, el auxiliar? Porque el auxiliar le vas a agregar la negativa. El auxiliar lo vas a traer al frente para agregarle, para hacer una pregunta. ¿Ok? Let's make sure. Ahora, en esta regla gramatical, en este tiempo gramatical, perdón, eh, el auxiliar va presente en el positivo, en el negativo y en la pregunta. ¿Ok? Just notice that. Que noten también que going to está presente en las tres formas. Que el verbo va en su forma base. No lleva ING ni nada, no está en pasado. No va a la tercera persona del presente, simple. Ok. So far so good. ¿Está ahí todo bien? Ok, good. Yes. Bien, es la primera vez que lo vemos. Vamos a hablar de esto toda la semana. No falten porque vamos a hacer un montón de ejercicios y dinámicas para practicar. Ok. So... First dynamic, give me an example. Uh, let's start with the list here. Ricardo, make a positive statement with going to. Going to. I go into. How, how, come on, otra vez? I go, I go into. Okay, listen, I am. Ah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm contraction. contraction. Yes, okay, let's use the contraction. <laughs> Good, you can contract with the verb to be am. Okay. I'm going to, uh, I go into rest. I go into rest uh, in. I'm going to rest at, at night. <laughs> Excellent. I'm going to rest at night. And it's true. It is true. You're going to rest at night. Very good. Okay, Marlon, give me a negative. I'm not going to waste more money ah. in my car. Okay, I'm not going. I'm not, I'm waste. Not. Waste. Waste more, more money, money in my car. My car. Yep. There you go. And a question, Carmen, in it. Am I going to dance with my husband? Am I? Okay, it's very probable, right? Am I going to dance, dance? Am I going to dance with my husband? Dance. Mm -hmm. Husband, husband, husband. Husband. There you go. Husband. Am I going to dance with my husband? And another point here, you can make an open question, remember, just by adding a WH here. Why, you know, where? Where am I going to sit in the party? Where am I going to sit in the party? Where are you going to be tomorrow? When are you going to call me? Etc. Okay. Okay. Solo recuerden que cuando se ocupa who es un pronombre indefinido. Por tanto, ya no necesito este sujeto. Okay. Si ocupo who. If I say, who is going to see you tomorrow? I, I don't know. Who's going to see you tomorrow? Who's going to see you tomorrow? Who's going to see you tomorrow? Okay. Bien. Cuando hemos terminado aún con el going to, ¿alguien notó algo extraño en la manera de expresarse de José en el video? 
algo que él estaba repitiendo mucho al usar going to? Active listening. Tienen que tener el oído bien abierto cuando pongamos un video, ¿ok? So, I, have, I have a question with this last example. Uh -huh. Why we are not using the with at the last of the question? Who is going to see you tomorrow with? Oh, porque estoy preguntando quién te va a ver mañana. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Con quién te I vas understand. a ver? Ajá. Con quién te vas a ver mañana es diferente. Okay. Excellent question. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. ¿Cómo sería entonces con quién te vas a ver mañana? Who are you? Who are you going to see tomorrow with? Who are you going to sit? Who are you going to meet tomorrow? No. Who are, are you, you going? going... Huh. <laughs> who are you going to see tomorrow drink. with? Who are you meeting with tomorrow? Who are you meeting with tomorrow? Pero ahí sería presente continuo. Uh -huh. Sería presente continuo. Who are you going to meet with tomorrow? Who are you going to meet with to tomorrow? Meet with tomorrow. Okay. Este no es uno de mis, prefer de mis tiempos gramaticales preferidos porque lo siento muy largo para expresar lo mismo. Okay. Ahora, de manera general, en 30 años de hablar con gringos, te diré, Nunca diferencian en esta regla. Si lo hacen, pues esto es algo muy natural en ellos. Ellos no reparan en si tienen planeado o no hacer algo. Ellos solo ocupan lo primero. ¿Ok? Ahora bien, esto es algo muy común. Y lo que estaba esperando su respuesta, lo que esperaba como respuesta de la pregunta de qué notaron en el acento de José o en su manera de expresarlo, era la abreviación en articulación, ¿ok? So, for example, this coming weekend, I'm going to watch a movie with my family. We're going to go to the beach, then we're going to go to the church, then we're going to go to the supermarket, then we're going to go to watch a football game, then we're going to go to my parents-in-law. We're going to go to, going to go to. Eso es slang para algunas personas. Ok, decir gona. Y gona significa going to. Ok. Entonces, hoy, I'm gonna go to. Ya, yeah. I'm gonna go to. Y estoy diciendo lo mismo que diría, I am going to go to. Ok, y agrego un lugar acá. I'm going to go to the beach. Por ejemplo, I'm going to go to the church. Entonces, en lugar de going to, reemplazo el going to con gonna. Y estoy diciendo exactamente lo mismo. Got it? Got it. Ok. Don't forget, no se les olvide la conjugación del verbo to be, right? Alguien que me la diga así rápido, rápido, rápido. I am. Okay, good. You are, I am. You are. He, she, it, it, it. They uh -huh. are. We are. You are. Excellent. You are. Excellent. Sí. Un consejo. Uh, Puede decir I am. Y luego he, she, it, is. We, you, they are. Oh, okay. Sí, más fácil de memorizar. <laughs> más fácil de memorizar las cosas. Ok. So far, so good. Any questions? No questions? Yo tengo una pregunta, teacher. Claro. Respecto a, a lo último, a la última parte de I'm going y I'm, I'm going, I'm gonna. Eh, ¿Cuál es la diferencia? ¿En qué caso se ocupa? ¿Es válido ocupar uno y el otro? ¿O es es no importa en qué momento se ocupa. No es mal utilizado, digamos, ocupar en, en X eh, oración, I'm gonna. Gracias por la pregunta, Edwin. Estaba esperando que alguien lo hiciera. Sí, si ocupo slang, quiere decir caliche. Ah, ok. Ok, entonces no es recomendable ocuparlo en un ambiente laboral, en un ambiente mm -hmm. profesional. Sin embargo, se hace. Para serte honesto, eh, existe una corriente de mi punto de vista cambiante ahorita en El Salvador lo han de haber notado 
Eh, yo estudié relaciones internacionales y fue lo primero que noté. La manera de, de hacer relaciones de, de, pues, del gobierno actual, digámoslo. No me voy a meter en política. Pero bueno, eh, ya no se hablan de usted y una gran pompancia en las relaciones. Ahora es más de tú a tú. Agarrar confianza así te permite pasar a ese nivel de confianza con tu jefe, con tus compañeros de trabajo. Si no, decímelo. Al principio en el trabajo era como que disculpe. Buenos días, buenas tardes. Y hoy en día, un bueno. año después. Entonces, lo mismo, ¿no? Es lo mismo con el americano, ¿no? En la cultura americana es así. Agarras confianza rápido, te ganas a la gente y pues en buena onda, sin ser mal creado ni nada, eso sí, ¿verdad? Y pues puedes ocupar ese tipo de, de vocabulario. Eh, resaltar entre ellos, gona, gora, uh, wanna, ¿sí? Y eso quiere decir got to, want to. Yo no ocupo esto mucho, gona, Gora, wanna, getta, que sería get, get to igual. Uh, sí, y ahí lo van a escuchar mucho. Eso sí, lo van a escuchar muchísimo. Por eso me gusta eh, hacerle ver esto, porque se ocupa mucho. Ok. No se pierdan. Ok. Good, good. Ok, teacher. Thanks. <laughs> Questions. Now let's practice. I'm gonna go to the beach. Repeat, I'm gonna go to the beach. I'm gonna go to the beach. I'm gonna go to the beach. Excellent. I'm gonna go to church. I'm gonna go to church. I'm gonna go to study. I, I'm gonna go to study. Perfect, Ricardo. Good. Edwin, try. I'm gonna go to study. Así, I'm gonna go to study. Gonna go to study. Gonna, gonna go to study. Sí, ah. esto, esto suena cuando una T, y eso se da porque la T está entre dos vocales. Ya, go to, go to, go to. Go to, go to. Ay, I'm gonna go to, go to. Ok. Good, go to. Good, so watch the video. Watch this video again. So you can practice that part. Now let's, see. If, si no tienen otra pregunta, we move to the future. Hay una pregunta que no han hecho y lo hizo ver Ricardo. Yeah. Contractions. Um, remember, that's easy. Um, your, his, oh. she's, it's, we're, there. Easy, yeah. right? Your. Excellent. Okay. Let's move to, oh, what, what did I do? Wait, I pushed too many keys on my keyboard. My bad. Okay, so let's talk about, can you see? Yeah? Okay, yeah. good. Let me go back here. Give me one, two. Oh, I was pushing tabs. <laughs> so let's move on with Will. Vamos a hablar de Will super rápido. The future with Will. The future. El futuro con Will. ¿Quién es Will? Ok. Good. So, Will when Will. You, cuando hacemos Will, let's do a positive. We need... ¿Anybody? Subject. Will. Verb. Mm -hmm. Compliment. Easy. Okay, give me an example. Ya dejen de decir, I, come on, let's change the subject. Yeah, the subject. In fact, let's change the subject and, and the students. Wait, I need, to I need to hear Victor, Stephanie, Abigail, Maria Luisa. I need to hear you guys. Okay, give me an example. Victor. Uh, um, for example, I will. Ah, don't say I. Give me another subject. There are seven subjects. Uh, she is. She, she okay, is. good. She. She will. She will. Uh, enjoy. Enjoy. Uh, your, oh, her. 
cup. No, hair cup. Hair cup. Hair coat. Yes. Uh, excellent. Okay. She Coca. will enjoy her uh, or Coke. Coke. Yes. Coke. Yes. That's an addiction, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You have an addiction. You have an addiction. Okay. Good. Let's go. Uh, then that's a positive statement. Let's go with a negative. Stephanie. Yeah, Stephanie. So what do we need, Stephanie? She will win. No, no, no. Formula, formula. La formula. She we mm, will not will. No, will not. Will not. Will. Uh huh. Uh huh. Must bear. Okay. And complement. And the complement. Now let's have Abigail. Can you give us an example of a negative sentence? I can barely hear you. Apenas y le escucho, perdón, Abigail. We, we will not. Dance to the party. Dance in the party. Like that? Yes. Okay, excellent. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Maria Luisa, do you know the structure for the future with Will for a question? Maria Luisa, ask me el favor. Hello. There she is. Hello, Maria Luisa. Yes. Okay. ¿Cuál sería la estructura para una pregunta cerrada usando will? Um, to be my subject. Will. Must bear. Okay, will plus subject plus verb plus the complement. And then don't forget, question mark. Excellent. Thank you, Maria Luisa. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, now let's see, Ricardo, give me an example again. I went back to the top. Yeah. The question? Yeah. Okay. Will will they uh, will they visit the Tikal ruins? Uh -huh. Okay. Simple. Bien, chicos. Entonces tenemos el sujeto will que sería mi complemento. Ah, perdón, mi auxiliar. En este caso estoy ocupando will para todo. Algo que noté en el ejemplo de José es que um, él hacía una pregunta con going to y hacía ver que tú puedes contestar con will o con going to, como decíamos, dependiendo si está seguro o no de llevar a cabo esa acción. En este caso, she will enjoy her coke. Mm, no estoy seguro de que vaya a disfrutar su Coca-Cola porque yo creo que es diabética, pero no estoy seguro entonces. She will enjoy her coke. Okay. We will not dance in the party. Mm, creo que no vamos a bailar. Tal vez me convenza más tarde, ¿no? Okay. Uh, will they visit the Tikal ruins? Ruins, I'm sorry, ruins. Will they visit the Tikal ruins? ¿Será que lo van a hacer? Mm. Okay. Y de nuevo, no quiero hacer una pregunta abierta, pues solo agrego una WH al principio. Y ya podría decir why, o lo que sea, ¿no? Why will they, how, how will they, when will they. Y lo mismo se cumple al usar who, el pronombre indefinido quién, right? Who will visit the Tikal ruins? Who will visit the Tikal ruins? ¿Quién visitará? ¿Quién visitará las ruinas de Tikal? Ok. 
Hasta acá todo bien? So far so good? No. Yes. Va. In the last sí. example, you uh, disappeared the... You removed the pronoun. The pronoun. Remove. Sí, porque who es indefinido, Ricardo, buena pregunta, y entonces se convierte en, el pronombre se convierte en esa WH, ¿quién? ¿Ya? Like whom, like whom. No, whom. No. A ver, whom eh, es para otro tema. <ríe> no, acá, okay. a ver, es con, no forget tengo, forget no tengo tilde acá, pero a ver, who es quién sin tilde. No, perdón, con tilde, con tilde. Who es con tilde. Whom es sin tilde. El chico quien me llamó ayer. Who? Uh -huh. The guy who, the guy whom called, who, no, the guy whom you called yesterday. The guy whom you called yesterday. El chico que llamaste. The man who sold the world. No, that's another example. Es otro, otro punto. Otro pisto aparte. Okay, 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 lo vamos okay. a cubrir. Lo vamos a cubrir. Lo van a ver en el siguiente módulo, si no me equivoco. Okay. So, who will you go with? Como decía por ahí Marlon. Go with. ¿Con quién irás? ¿Con quién irás? Y ese es otro tema. Mira, Ricardo. El, el uso de preposiciones al final de preguntas. Oh, okay. no, si no se usa la preposición, no tiene sentido la pregunta. Ok. Who with? Who with? Si quisiera saber quién va a ir, solo preguntaría. Who will go? Who will go? ¿Quién irá? Okay. Who will go? Simple. Sí, compliquémonos más la vida. Who, <risa> perdón, el, el, um, el futuro <risa> se puede contractuar con doble L. Ok. Acá contractúo con el will. Cada uno de los sujetos agregándole apóstrofe LL. Tengo las caps encendidas. Entonces podría decir I'll. Ok. I could say you'll. Ojo con esto porque hay, um, aquí tu lengua se enrolla hasta atrás para hacer la doble L. Ok. You'll. You'll. Hill. 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 Uh, Dale. Dale. Uh -huh. uh, Algo complejo. Ido. Ido. Okay. A mí me gusta mucho contrastar eh, la fonética en ese sentido. Los fonemas, eh, decís I'll como la palabra I'll, que quiere decir pasillo. Uh, sí. I'll, la misma pronunciación. Ok, you'll como la palabra el mes. Right? You'll, you'll lie. You'll, you'll lie. You'll, es decir, tu lengua va a ocupar la misma posición que en esa palabra. You'll lie. He'll, you'll lie. ¿cómo la? Colina, ¿no? Hill. Hill. Dale, como el nombre. Dale. Dale. Italy, como la palabra Italy. o el país. Italy. 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 Ok. Italy. And so on. And so on. Y así continuamente, ¿ok? Eso solo es fonética, las palabritas, ¿ok? Good. I'll, you, will, they'll, he'll, she'll, it'll, that's it. Bien, contracción. Y una cosa más. Lo más común al negar es ocupar la contracción want. ¿Ok? Want significa will not. I won't go. I won't tell you. Ok, en lugar de will not, tratemos de ocupar want. Want. For example, we said we want here. We want dance. We want dance in a party. We want dance in a party. Ok. Ok. Questions. Y de nuevo, fíjense mucho en esto. Estoy diciendo. 
¿Qué estaría diciendo? Ella disfrutará su Coca-Cola. O simplemente disfrutará su Coca-Cola. ¿Ok? No bailaremos en la fiesta. No estoy diciendo no vamos a ir a bailar en la fiesta. Aquí es no bailaremos en la fiesta. ¿Ok? Uh, ¿Visitarán las ruinas? Ni siquiera digo, ¿ellos visitarán las ruinas? No. ¿Visitarán las ruinas? ¿Ok? And so on. Questions, questions. Preguntas, chicos. Quedan exactamente cinco minutos. Solo hemos visto la gramática este día. Mañana será todo la clase de hablar, 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 hablar. Hasta adquirir ya la pronunciación adecuada. Questions. También explico que no deja dudas. Oh, my God. <risa> Bueno, soy. Hey, no, en serio, <ríe> por favor. Teacher, eh, eh, por ejemplo, yo voy a estar preguntarlas, puedo hacer, eh, por ejemplo, cuando yo le, le pregunto a alguien, tú vas a ir a, por ejemplo, a, a Perú y, y visitarás Machu Picchu. Puedo hacer eso. Are you going to go to Perú and will you visit the ruins of Machu Picchu? Yeah, Combina, combinaste ambas, Víctor. Sí, excelente. Yeah. Porque, es, o sea, traducido a nuestro lenguaje es exactamente eso. Vas a ir a y visitarás. O sea, eso. Cuidado con eso. Excelente. Ahí combinaste ambos, ¿no? El going to y luego el will. Perfecto. Uh -huh. Es como hablar en español. O sea, la pregunta de nosotros es igual que el, 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 el inglés parecer es tratar de hablar el inglés como nosotros lo hablamos, algo más o menos. ¿ve? Sí, ese es el contexto en el que los he querido ubicar esta noche, que eh, al usar going to estás bien seguro de lo que vas a hacer porque ya vas a llevar a cabo esa acción. Ya estás en camino, estás tan seguro. Decís, I'm going to go on vacations, voy a ir de vacaciones. Ya tengo el pisto borrado, ya está todo hecho, ya sé con quién voy a ir o con quién no voy a ir. Y ya, cuánto me va a costar todo, ya coticé. Pero si digo, I will go, I will go next year on vacations, ni siquiera sé cuándo. Una cosa más que mencionaba José en el video es el uso de, uh, de las palabras que te maybe. dan como probabilidad. ¿eh? Maybe, ajá, ¿qué otra mencionaba por ahí? Marlon, ¿alguien? Somos. Yes. Uh -huh. I think. I yes. think. I think. Ajá. Uh -huh. I guess. Probability. I guess. I guess. Decía. I guess. Uh -huh. Probably. Can I, say, can I say perhaps? Perhaps. Sí, perhaps and maybe are the same thing. Perhaps. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so on. Um, most likely. Most likely. Todo lo que involucre en una probabilidad, pues iría dentro de eh, esa parte ¿no? de Will. Okay. Frank Sinatra. I won't dance. Don't ask me. I won't dance. Why should I? I won't dance. Madam, with you. My, my, my feet won't let my heart do things. No, my heart won't let my feet do things that they should do. Lo que ellas quieren. Women... The title. <laughs> Hola, Ricardo. What is the title? Oh, the I, that's the title of the song. I won't dance. Frank Sinatra. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Mi, escena, mi escena favorita de lo que ellas quieren con Mel Gibson. Oh, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson pone esa canción en el momento, agarra su sombrero y se pone a hacer un bailecito ahí en Bien a, los, bien a los Sinatra, yo soy fan, fanático de Frank Sinatra. Great job. Ok. Questions. Ya no hay preguntas, ya terminamos la clase. Lo veo mañana. Sueñen con el futuro. Uh, a question. Yes, What is the, please. the purpose? What's the purpose? What, what's the purpose of the audio? Of the audio. 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 What audio? What audio? You say training preparation audio? We sent to you. Oh, did I? Do you remember? 
Les dije que me enviaron un audio en la clase anterior. Yeah. Wow, honestamente, no recuerdo haberlo dicho, pero creo que fue para ayudarles el que quisiera hacerlo como opcional, ¿no? Mm, okay. Sí, o sea, sí, les decía, ajá, correcto. Eh, yo tengo la costumbre de ayudar a mis alumnos en ese sentido, o sea, quien quiere aprender realmente, ¿no? Eh, tú me podrías decir, Ricardo, le voy a enviar un, un audio de 30 segundos por WhatsApp, ¿no? Y yo con gusto reviso el audio, nomás me queda un chancecito y, o sea, tú, tú me dices, por ejemplo, what, te preguntas a ti mismo, what are you going to do next vacations? Y contestas en 30 segundos, no más de 30 segundos. I'm going to go to the beach with my family, then I will uh, do a barbecue uh, at the beach for 30 segundos. Y luego yo te contesto escribiendo las áreas de oportunidad y corrigiéndolas con mi voz. O sea, te voy grabando cada palabra, cómo se pronuncia para que tú le escuches, repitas, escuchar y repetir. Bien, eh, para cerrar la clase, eso no es tarea, eso es solamente una idea que les daba de cómo me podrían eh, ustedes, cómo les podría yo ayudar eh, de alguna otra manera, ¿no? Pero principal objetivo, chicos, es que para el jueves a la medianoche tiene que estar terminada toda la plataforma, ya no va a haber ningún ejercicio. De esta sección 5 solo hay un knowledge check. Solo es uno nada más en la sección 5. Solo les invito a que lo lleven a cabo en cuanto puedan y pues les veo mañana, ¿ok? A las 9. ¿Bien? Okay. Good. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll yeah. see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.